Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. Deuteronomy chapter 13. This is going to be kind of a part B. So let's read chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, you know, like uh, a miracle, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken, you not listen unto the words of that prophet, or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. In other words, the Lord's going to prove or test you. To know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Now, the penalty it was when they wanted to send you to another god was to kill them, stone them. And you know what? These Satanists, they know the Bible better than the average churchgoer. Sodomites know full well what the penalty for sodomy is in the Bible. They know. The churchgoers don't know. The churchgoers think, oh, well, you know, we, we got to preach to them. We, we got to get them saved. You know, same thing with the Satanists. Satanists know what the Bible says the solution for them is. They know it better than church people, especially if you go to a mega church. Oh, yeah, they know. Trust me. Satan knows the Bible better than 98% of probably the church people. I mean, I, I might be wrong. It might be 98.5, you know, or it might be 97. I don't know. I don't think I'm far off, though. I really don't. But here's the deal. Because the people who follow Christ refuse to do these things, God's going to prove you. He's going to test the church and see whether you love the Lord. Will you stand for him or will you cave? Let's take a look. See, the devil's kids know that when you tolerate their evil, they get raised up into positions, and then once they become powerful enough, they will not tolerate you. No way. Turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I know I've beaten this chapter to death, but hey, let's read it one more time. And trust me, this won't be the last, um, probably, unless tube deletes me. Um, I think I'm going to start calling it YidTube. Uh, I don't know. Verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. This is why they hate Paul. Because Paul gives you the real deal. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Okay. What's the theme of this? The coming of Christ and the gathering of the church. Verse 2, that ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us, as that day, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Okay, there's a warning there. Don't be deceived. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. Have we fallen away? I think so. And that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, like I've mentioned in the past, the Muslims are looking for a false messiah. 
And then they teach their true Messiah will come and put the false Messiah down. So will there be a false Antichrist before the real Antichrist? That's kind of how I'm leaning and believing. The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So there has to be another temple, my opinion. I don't think this happened in 70 AD. I'm sorry. I don't believe that. Verse 5, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now let, who, who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed. The wicked's going to be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying, lying wonders. So he's going to have the power to do miracles, signs, and lying wonders wonders. Uh, what did we just read in Deuteronomy 13? Yeah. If, if they give you a sign or a wonder and the sign or wonder come to pass, you know, Deuteronomy 13, we just read it. If the sign or wonder comes to pass saying, let us go after other gods, let us serve them. Uh, well, let's go back to uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. What is the truth? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Not Muhammad, not Rabbi Schneerson, no, but by me. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. They don't want to believe God. They don't want to believe the son that God sent. They don't want that. No, they want to believe the other guy. So God's going to let them believe what they want to believe, which is going to be a lie. That they should believe a lie. God's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. All right, one more thing. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast, a beast, rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. So this beast is not good. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now, if you don't know who the dragon is, 
Revelation 12, 9 tells you. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Satan deceives the whole world, some to a greater degree, some to a lesser degree. He had me fooled on a bunch of things, too. Revelation 13, verse 2, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear in his mouth, as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon. Ah, let us, let us you know, if the, the dreamer dreams or the, who does the, the signs and wonders, if he tries to lead you into worshiping another god, what are you supposed to do? We're supposed to preach Jesus to him so he can get saved. No, that's not what you're supposed to do, according to Deuteronomy 13. But we don't want to do that. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And who are the saints, people? Why, the pre-trib rapture people will say, well, that's the unbelieving Jews that get saved during the tribulation because we're up in heaven having the marriage supper of the Lamb while everybody here on earth is getting slaughtered and suffering. Uh, if you believe those kind of fairy tales. I don't think so. I think the saints are the Christians. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them that which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. That's right. He's going to have power to bring fire down from the sky, just like Elijah did. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, signs and wonders, people. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Uh, what's that in the Ten Commandments? Not to uh, have any images or idols? Yeah, I think I remember reading that somewhere. Hmm. 
Yeah, when uh, when people start being told that they have to worship an image or an idol, hopefully some of them will wake up. But then again, if their names aren't written in the book of life, they're toast. Verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. All the modern Bibles, the, the, the New Age Bible versions, say on. There's a big difference between on and in. You could put snake venom on your hand. Nothing, you know, not much will happen to you. But if you put snake venom in your hand, you got a problem. You could take uh, some poison and put it on your hand. But if you put it in your stomach, you got a problem. There's a big difference between on and in. And don't be surprised if the modern TV preachers say, no, 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 no. The Bible says on your hand. This is going in your hand. This is not the mark of the beast, they're going to tell you. All your mega churches, all your TV preachers, they all work for the devil. At least that's my opinion. God proved me wrong. And then I'll get on my hands and knees and I'll repent and I'll apologize. But until that time, I think they all work for the devil. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 603 score and six. Uh, the, I, this is why I believe that man, Adam, man was created, uh, made on the sixth day. Because it's the number of a man. Some people say that he was created on the eighth day. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. It's just, I see six, and I think six day. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. In his name, amen.